When you're first starting out in Revit, navigation can be kind of complicated. So I want to show you guys some of the tricks and tips I use for when I'm navigating my models inside Revit. Now on the left side of the screen, you're going to see a project browser. And this is going to include all of the views in the project, along with all of the families, the schedules, anything we can think of is going to be here in this project browser. Now the first thing I want to show you guys is we can expand and collapse this browser. So if I right click here and I click on expand all, everything will be expanded in this project browser. Now if I click on any one of these and right click and say collapse all, everything will be collapsed down. So that's very helpful when going through your project and organizing all of these tabs. So now that my project browser has been collapsed, I can't see any of the views. Now if I want to search for something, so I want to find this working view, all I have to do is right click and click the search button. And I'm just going to search for working. And we'll click next. And you can see Revit will find anything that has the name working in the project browser. I can also use this to find families in my model. So maybe I want to find a water closet. So we'll click on next. And you can see right down here, there's a water closet flesh valve. And I'm just going to close here. And Revit will search through all the families. Now, I don't want all these open because it becomes a little tedious to have to scroll through all these. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to collapse all again. Now, let's go back to our views by just hitting this plus plumbing, plumbing again. I'm going to go to my floor plans and let's just open up a bunch of views. So when I have multiple views open, so in this case I have six views open, I want to be able to see all my views sometimes. So one handy trick we can use is tiling our windows. So if you go up here to tile windows, you can see that I can also use the keyboard shortcut WT for window tile. So I'm going to click or use WT and you can see all of my views get tiled in a nice clean manner. Now they're all in different zooms, so I want to zoom all. So I can use the keyboard shortcut ZA and it will quickly zoom all of my windows. Now this can be great if I have a nice big screen, but if I'm working on like a laptop, I'm going to want to tab my views. So if I want to go back to a tabbed view, all I have to do is use the keyboard shortcut TW and that will tab all of my views back. Now if I want to zoom all of them again, I can use the ZA tool and you can see all of my views are now zoomed perfectly so I can see them. Now there's one more trick I want to show you guys with tiled views. So let's tile our views again by clicking WT. Now there might be a time where I want to put this 3D view all in the upper left. So to do that, all I have to do is let me go back to my tabbed view. I want 3D all to be in the upper left. So I can just move this tie or tab over. And now when I hit WT, you can see my 3D all is here. Now if I want this working view to be down here, I need it to be second. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's the order. So let's go back to our tab views, and I want my working view to be next to it or below 3D view all. So let's now tile our views again. And now you can see the working view and the 3D view are right here. And so working view, 3D view, but if I want the 3D all there, I can just do that. So you can kind of play around with the order here, and it might help you guys out to make things look nice. Now I can always use the zoom all command and all my views will be zoomed. But if I only want to zoom out or zoom the extents of one view, I can click into that view and use ZE and that will zoom the extents of only one view and the others will not be affected. So if you only want to do it for one view, just use ZE. Now what I find a lot is when I'm working and I'm usually working in more of a tabbed view like this, I think most of you probably are. I will have like 10 tabs open and that's actually kind of problematic because what Revit will do is it will try to display the graphics in these other tabs while you're not working in them and it'll kind of slow down your model. So what you always want to do is you want to make sure that you are constantly closing the inactive views that you don't really need. So anytime I find myself open with a lot of views, I'll make sure I hit this close inactive views button and that will close all the inactive views that I'm not using currently. Now let's go back to my working view. I'm gonna hit cancel here. And I wanna talk a little bit about section boxes. And so right here I have this section. Now there's a couple ways to get to a section. So I can click on the section and I can easily just right click it and I can go to that view. 
and this will take me right to that section view. Now, I'm gonna X out of that, and there's also another way to do it. Now, what I can do is if I zoom in on the section head, I can actually double click this and go right to the section as well. So here we go, we'll double click it, and it'll also take me to the section. Now, the trick with this is I cannot have the section selected. So once the section is selected, if I try to double click it, nothing will happen. So you have to make sure it's deselected and then double click it. And now I can, uh, Revit will display it in my tabbed view. So if I wanna tile them, I can do WT and ZA, and that will quickly zoom all of them. And so like using these is a quick way to uh, work inside Revit. Now let's go back, so I'm gonna tab my views again by using TW, ZA. Now I'm gonna delete the section again, and I wanna show you guys a cool thing. So I'm gonna go back to this section by going to the view, and if I want to find where this section is located in my project browser, I don't wanna to have to look through here every time. What I can do is I can just right click on the view, and I can say, find in project browser. And when I do that, you can see it will automatically open up the section where it's located in my project browser. And this was really um, helpful for when you're trying to add a view on a sheet. So now that it's selected, I can go to my sheets right here. Well, I have to create one, so let's create a sheet. And if I wanted to, you know, say I'm working in this section right here and I wanna add it to my sheet, I would just find it in the project browser. It highlights right here. And then I can quickly just add this section to my sheet. So that's like a helpful tip for you guys when you're adding things to sheets. So let's go back to the working view. Now, another thing I wanna show you guys is when we're working in Revit, I'm gonna to want to, especially on like a laptop, I wanna get through these views very quickly. I don't want to click on each one every time. So what I can also use is the Control Tab button. And when I hit Control Tab, you can see Revit will cycle through all the views in my project, and it will go from left to right. But if I want, but if I want to go from right to left, all I have to do is use Control Shift Tab, and it will go the opposite way. So this is very helpful when you're working on a laptop and you wanna to go to the next view or you wanna to go to the previous view. Make sure to use the control tab or the control shift tab to navigate your tabs. Now the last thing I wanna show you guys is a little trick that I just kinda of figured out recently. So another thing you can do with sections, so if we go to this section by just double clicking it, if I wanna find out where this section is actually located in different views, I can right click on it and I can click on this Find Referring Views button. And what that will do is find all the views that have this section placed on it. So we knew that the working view had the section because that's how we got to it, but we didn't know the sheet view also had it. So what I can do is I can open my sheet view by clicking open, it will automatically open it from the project browser. And then I can kind of zoom out and I can see that there's this section just randomly floating over here. So I might want to remove the section from this view so it doesn't display. So I can just right click on it, hide in view, and hide the category. The section still exists in the project, so we can still go to our section and it will still be in the working view, but that's a quick way to kind of clean up all of your sections and views that you don't want them to occur. So let's go ahead and tile these views. We'll zoom all. I'm just gonna close out of this one. We'll zoom all again. And as you can see, that's just a quick bunch of quick ways to navigate in Revit. And I hope you guys really use these techniques because they have made modeling for myself very fast. And if you guys wanna learn more about um, all the techniques I use to create this model, make sure to check out my Plumbing 101 course where we go over every single system, the cold water system, the hot water system, we go over the sanitary system and the vent system, and even the storm system inside the model. I show you guys with the international plumbing code how to calculate every single system, your water he heater sizes, your storm drain piping sizes, your sanitary piping sizes, and we also go over routing of uh, venting in the sanitary system, which is pretty much the most complicated system in plumbing design. So all of that is covered in my course, and I hope you guys check it out. Thanks.